Look at me. Oh. Hey, Denim, look me in the eyes. Did you know that John Dutton wasn't coming back this season? Did you know? Did you know you didn't tell the fans on Instagram? He you didn't tell the shoot. He can't look at me. Why didn't you tell the fans on Instagram if you knew John Dutton wasn't coming back this season? Huh? He can't look me in the eyes. Why can't you look at me, Jamie? We both know why, don't we? I feel like anybody else, anybody but Beth, could have. He could look him in the eyes and lie like a stone cold fucking killer. I think his, I think Jamie has an incredible poker face. He's been doing this for years and years. He's an attorney. I think he could lie to anybody but Beth. The shame that he must feel, he didn't want it to happen, but he's got to think, I did do this, and he's guilty of it. I will be the last thing on this planet your rotten fucking eyes will ever see. At this point, the only reason why she didn't kill him beforehand was because of John. Speak to me straight, Beth. Did I lose a son today? If I'm Jamie, bro, do you know how many awesome places there are to live? <laughs> There's some, the world is a big I place, bro. Pardon us? No, I don't think I will. I think Market Equities uses Jamie as a puppet. I am very sorry for your loss, Jamie. It does present new opportunities for us. I think that as soon as they've accomplished their goals, they're not picking up his calls anymore. The state of Montana looks forward to a long relationship with your company, Ellis. They're gonna support his political career to secure the ranches, you know, the lease on the land at the ranch, so they can do what they wanna do, and then they are gonna lose his number real quick. Well, that's how they make their money. Right. Is they, right. they put powerful pieces on the board in position to service what they want, that they're good at it. We would be very supportive of you, should you choose to run, Jamie. They are able to use Jamie's weakness by essentially being able to bring in uh, a female to get close to him. And she got so in that he really felt like, oh, maybe you're a different enemy, right? Maybe yeah. you're actually not that bad. And it was like, no, that was the plan from the, from the beginning. I think I'm gonna start with him. This is the first time that we have been outside of Montana together. It's the first time I've been out in Montana ever. We learn in this episode that Rip has never left the state of Montana before. Where would they go uh, if they didn't have to do what they're doing? I mean, does she take him to Disneyland or the beach? I think he said he's never been, to, never seen the ocean. Well, not even to the beach. Imagine he's in a bathing suit. Yeah, like a leather bathing suit. Right, a branded, <laughs> and a, a, brand, a, br yeah. brand, a branded bathing suit. Where would they go? Would they even stay? Would they stay in the U.S.? Would they go somewhere else? Like there would like, be like lifestyle. Lifestyle you influencers. Know? Life, yes. Yeah, there'll be influencers. I think yeah, that's she's right. always kind of doing it, and he's in the background being like. <sighs> Imagine all the things that we could do if we weren't shackled to that ranch. If Rip left the ranch and had to get a job that you would want to do and be good at. Maybe he does the clay, what's the clay? Pottery? Ceramics. Pottery. Maybe he does ceramic. Yeah, ceramic. Yeah. That, maybe that would be fun. The softer side of Rip. I could see him doing that. I think maybe that's the name of the business, the softer side of Rip. A ceramics artist. Right. We also threw, were throwing around before the show like a ride sharing thing where it was like ride sharing with Rip. Oh yeah. Right, where you don't really know. It's like a gamble you may 50% chance you could get to your location or you go to the train station. They get in the car from the airport and the guy gets in, hey, how you doing? No talking. That'll be the last fucking thing you do. Yeah. <laughs> shh, shh. That could be kind of interesting. Get out. Right, right sharing with Red. Get out of here. Let's take a walk, son. One of the main enduring themes of Yellowstone is this intergenerational relationship, and in some ways this intergenerational trauma. You know, John Dutton has placed tremendous weight on his children. What do you want me to become? A lawyer. You always say that you don't respect lawyers. All of them, in their own ways, have tried to sort of stretch their wings and fly away from the ranch, and John Dutton has brought them all home. I need you more than ever. Can you stay for a while? Casey, he wants to break this cycle, and he says to Tate, Tate, what do you want? You know, I never asked you what you wanted to be when you grow up, and I didn't because, hell, I don't even know myself. 
Family is more important to Casey than legacy. The fact that the family is having a, a nurturing environment, it seems like he finds his legacy in that. You have to create the, the legacy such that you can support all of those that don't want to do it, and they can have the luxury of not mm. doing it. Yeah. And then Casey turns down the livestock commissioner, he doesn't want to do anything, he wants to take his family away, he's always, you know, get me out of this. You're a prisoner here. Yeah, it's interesting the ways in which trying to protect the legacy has put the family in danger over and over again. It's gotten all of them shot, blown up. So for Casey, it feels like he's saying, no, no, I'm not gonna put my family in danger for the sake of the legacy. I'm gonna choose my family over oh, this legacy. Easy. Now we're gonna talk about Grandpa. Well, we are. We're talking about his legacy. All right. Cowboy shit, Montana versus Texas. So let's talk about the differences. When we started this whole thing, I had no idea about any of this. I don't know nothing about horses. Should I pet him? Right, so the first thing you do is you learn about like the generic concept of cattle ranching, cowboying. Get on the horse, Jerry. And then over time, you come to learn that there's actually a lot of different like regional distinctions. Where'd you learn to cowboy? And I've been fucking bawling and dragging since I could bounce piss off a rug. That ain't Spanish, she's Texan. For instance, like putting beans in your chili. Look, I'm just saying, it's not chili. It's chili. It's got beans in it. Specifically, what are the biggest differences between being on horseback working cows in the mountains of Montana versus the dry hellscape desert of Texas? <laughs> <laughs> They're both beautiful in their own way. Texas, my experience of it, was there's a tremendous amount of space. How long a ride is it? Oh, through two pastures, 10,000 acres each. Just two though. It's a different kind of terrain that you're facing, right? Rather than going like up hills, there's lots of valleys, gullies, valleys, Arroyos. kind of different brush, like a lot of sage brush. And then it's stuff like, yeah, the heat in Texas is a challenge that we never really faced in Montana. In Texas, at 2 p.m., it's 108 degrees. You're wearing leather chaps. Your chaps, or, yeah. Yeah, there's this really distinct. You got your cowboy hat on, so it's just insulating and just dripping. Yeah. Yeah. And the difference between like the Yellowstone and the four sixes, the sixes, rather than it being day workers or like sort of seasonal hires working there, a lot of these guys grew up on that ranch. Wow. They come from families that worked on that ranch. And it has all of these beautiful old ways of doing things, almost like cowboy etiquette. Like if you look at the four sixes compared to Yellowstone, the four sixes is like a real working operating ranch that actually like has been doing business for how many mm -hmm. decades. And Yellowstone is something that was beautifully created. Yeah, it's funny to hear even the energy, like there's that great sequence where you guys were gathering wild horses. John Dutton goes to Rip like, hey man, what's the plan? And Rip goes, the best we came up with sir is like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. That idea of like, we need to get this job done. We don't really have a plan. Let's all of us go out there, every man for himself and figure it out. In Texas, yeah. the plan is never really fuck it. Well, you were down there in both, so what is that? Is that your experience as well? The the core principles are the same of, of the cowboy culture, the lifestyle, the detail, the everything meaning something. Nothing is arbitrary. The differences are climate and you know what you know you might wear to stay cool. You know they wear straw hats. You know we wear felt hats. Little things like that, and then you know really mindful of the dangers of. Uh, you know, the aridness of Texas, there's no water really anywhere, and you have to right. know about that. And, you know, different dangers, different animals. You see that? Can we cook that thing up? No, I don't want you to cook it up. So they're kind of uh, circumstantial. Which one would you pick? And that would be Montana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it is hard <laughs> in in North Texas. Because also, like, Yellowstone, you're, like, around, like, other actors. So I feel like it's just a different experience as opposed to, like, going down to a space where there's, like, nobody's acting. This is literally what they do. My favorite similarity, though, is both sets of guys, wherever these guys come from, all over the world, they all have the same um, desire to want to share their wisdom. Life's too short to ride bad horses. Yes, sir. They're never barking at you or, or making you feel very bad because you completely, and they teach you the importance of why they may do something a very specific way, and they want you to, to get it, not admonish you. You toss one hell of a loop, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter if you're from Louisiana, like yeah. Ethan or Jake from Utah. from Utah, you know, guys that I've met from Australia or, you know, the boys, the Bursons from the Sixes, yeah. they have that same feel. Cowboys, it gets right there, Jimmy. 